5.5. Regarding design a second order, Butterworth's low pass filter with cutoff frequency FC equal 2.5 times 10 to the power of 3 hertz. Right, so that means the omega C, the cutoff frequency, the angular cutoff frequency is, well, we need to multiply that by 2 pi. So we would have 5000 pi radian per second. So this is the cutoff frequency of this filter. So we need such a filter, second order Butterworth filter. We know the transfer fun the um, the general form of the transfer function is h of s is well this is for the second order butterworth filter so it is 1 over s over omega c squared mm. omega c squared plus s over omega c times square root of 2 plus 1 right so this equals 1 over s over uh, omega c is s over 5000 times pi square root of, uh, uh, s over 5000 pi squared plus s over 5000 pi times square root of 2 plus 1 and this is the transfer function of the second order Butterworth low pass filter all right, so we need now to find the poles because, you know, the low-pass Butterworth filter doesn't have any zeros, so no zeros. But since it is second order, in general we can say an nth order Butterworth filter has n poles okay and here I define the pole or let me let me move to the next slide well pole let's let's label it by pn this equals omega c times e to the power of j to j pi times n minus 0 0.5 over n plus 0 0.5 okay so we have two poles here uh, first pole, well, this is not probably a good color, let me use different color. First pole P1 is, well, we know omega C is 5000 times pi e to the power of j pi n here, a small n is 1, 1 minus 0 0.5 over capital N, which is 2, plus 0 0.5. And then that means P1 equals 5,000 times pi e to the power of j pi. Um, well, if I want to simplify this right here, we would have uh, uh, we would have, I guess, three over four. So let me do that one over two. And Denominator, denominator is 2, so this plus 1 over 2 or 2 over 4, and that means 3 over 4. Yeah, that's true. So we would have, then we would have uh, 3 pi over 4. And this is the first pole, and in the same way I can find the uh, second pole. It's, it's 5,000 times pi times e to the power of j pi small n and here small n is 2 2 minus 0 0.5 over 2 plus 0 0.5 and if I simplify that then we would have 5000 pi e to the power of j 5 pi over 4 okay so we've got two poles and well, I think we should we should plot that. Am I right? Uh, well, it's it's asking where are the poles. So maybe this is enough. But in case you want to plot to draw them, then 
maybe it's better to to convert this exponential representation of the poles to rectangle representation. Well, we have a complex number here. Let me explain that in this way. We have a complex number here in the form of, uh, in the exponential form, r times e to the power of j theta, okay? Well, we call it exponential form or exponential representation. And I'm going to convert that to a rectangular format, uh, say x plus jy. So we call this rectangular format or representation. Okay. And if I'm going to do this, then I should calculate x, I, cal I should calculate y. Uh, using this r and this theta here all right so i would say x equals maybe same the same color x equals r times cosine of theta and y equals r times sine of theta all right okay if we look at the first pole here you see that here r is 5000 times pi and theta is 3 times pi over 4 if i want to convert this oh let, for this one as well i mean here r is 5000 pi for the second pole and its theta is 5 times pi over over 4 okay and well here the cosine of theta cosine of um, three times pi over four equals minus the square root of two over two and its sine three times pi over four is mm, square root of two over two and the cosine of 5 times pi over 4 is minus square root of 2 over 2 and sine of 5 times pi over 4 is minus square root of 2 over 2. Now we can, we can write the poles in their rectangular formats. Well, P1 equals uh, minus 5000 times pi. Uh, times square root of 2 over 2 plus j times 5000 times pi times square root of 2 over 2 and p2 equals minus 5000 pi square root of 2 over 2 plus uh, sorry minus j times 5000 pi times the square root of 2 over 2 and I can further simplify this we can write this as um, 5000 pi times minus square root of 2 over 2 plus j times square root of 2 over 2 and I, I think we don't need to mention that uh, a square root of 2 over 2 is 1 equals 1 over a square root of so you can use either the left one or the right one so both are the same and for this one for p2 we have 5000 times pi times minus square root of 2 over 2 minus j times the square root of 2 over 2 and if i want to plot this so we these are these are the complex numbers so we have a system like this here this axis is for imaginary part of the complex numbers and the horizontal axis is for the real part well let me label this by 5000 times pi and label here by 5000 times pi sorry this is the minus and this is also the minus 
5000 times pi and this is 5000 times pi, okay? So let's plot this one. Let's find this one, this uh, 2D frame. Uh, the real part is 5000 pi times minus 2 over square root of 2. This equals to minus 0 0.1, 0 0.707. Well, the same here equals 0 0.707. So the real part is 5000 pi times minus 0 0.707. That means somewhere here, around here. Okay. And for the imaginary part, it is somewhere around here. So if I connect these two, this is the place of P1, okay? This is the place of P1 in the same way you can find the place for P2 because this is again minus 0 0.707 and this guy here is 0 0.707 so if I find the imaginary part, imaginary part is, I'm sorry, the real part is somewhere here. And the imaginary part is somewhere here. If I connect these two, you'll find P2, okay? Well, that's obvious because these two uh, points are on a circle on a circle like this with the radius of 5000 times pi okay and these two points are the conjugate of each other so these are the the poles uh, we are looking for